ông cứ chụp ông mình chụp đẹp cả to cái trong đại ca địa tệ thi sạm đại ca nơi thay ni ông chụp đẹp từ sạm đại ca bằng to đập tập khay cam sạ xây steel header phải xài cầu thi lời đi cam vì thành lập hiệp vật tầm miền vật tầm miền phía kia nằm bục cô đơn như vậy có hai chơi nhà chơi rùm được không cần chậm đại ca sạm đại ca thay ni xong cột lục thiên xong đập sạm đại ca thay ni cột phía kia tiếng o nơi đường đại ni miền vật tầm miền xong cột sừng cọt đại lái lộ nuôn chía miền vật tầm miền nơi bận tục không luôn đại nơi bị càng cám bận tục sạm đại ca ni tam sẽ đây xong đây ở bọn ông chung người ra sàn đập bóng đòi mua hết bánh hà sọc nghiệp ngày thay ní ông chung nét nâng bận to sắp khay cám xạ xấy steven header hay lộ miền vật tầm miền ruột hái được nông bận tục sạm đại ca ni xong đập sạm đại ca thay ní mình miền xạ xấy mình rong ngục tề xong ông cùng bạn cùng lúc này sai câu vật thí đây chỉ bận to thay ní ông việc đào vị tư ca chung từ nông nàng sắp đến nhà đã bày to cả tăng tầm lúc đến đầu chỉ phù xạ xấy rụng đi xong chơi và xong phát thì chân đã thông tin lục mình vì bây giờ có bế ເຊິ່ງຄືເມດຕີກະເປສໍາອົກຄົນລູກປະເທດ Information that we received from the Department of Justice yesterday. This information has had few far-reaching implications for this trial. It pertains also directly to the Justice Department's decision. As submission, the Court's findings of the Court of Appeal are very important. Mr. President, I am sorry to interrupt, but can I say that I've had absolutely no advance notice of this. The courtesies at the bar are that advance notice should be given of such applications, even if in outline. Thông tin lực trí chắc rắm, xin mời khát đáy. Chắc-rắm-khát-rái-chắc-rái-chắc-rái-chắc-rái-chắc-rái-chắc-rái-chắc-rái-chắc-rái-chắc-rái-chắc-rái-chắc-rái-chắc-rái-chắc-rái-ch
บกุลนามเนี่ยเดินทางหนึ่งหลักดูจุมโคสังเกตการณ์ระบบกอดโฟกรอติสดับไว้ในยังเย็นนุติผมก็พ้นตายบริษัทที่ของสมุทรแม่แต่เช้าครั้งขาดไรตายังอาจจะบรรทัดเอาหน้ากากอาสาเทินาเผยแต่ไม่ดักร้ายหรือก็ยังเพื่อจะสาธิตแล้วแต่จังหวะเรียนยานนี้เอาทุนที่ได้มันเหมือนเงินเงินท่าตาเอายุเราดักร้ายเลยทุกคนเราแต่ Then of course, we are in an open court. We are in an open court. We are. It's a public trial. Mr. Vice President, the public court is open. Should we make an open court? 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 ไม่ได้เชื่อแต่ให้ก่อเป็นสิ่งที่ต้องเป็นสิ่งที่ต้องเป็นสิ่งที่ต้องเป็นสิ่งที่ต้องเป็นสิ่งที่ต้องเป็
cách nhầm đa ca sạm đa ca chia tha thế nặng ông nhầm đẹp nâng bật to thứ bật to pi ông nhầm đẹp đọt trai nơi bảy ha nơi chụp phố mộc đây lược là đời lục mỹ tv ông đã chia từ lục bây giờ cục bế cà phê cây lục nôn chia đây hai tha bảy ha ní cứ lục mỹ tv quạt bàn lược là phim bản toàn nơi về ní đây quạt bàn bàn chú nằm nâng chìm mún đò ông nhầm đẹp nâng đò phê kì mặt hàng tiết này được đây này thì xong chơi lục steel header xong chơi lục này chỉ có ống ta miền ở đây trong một thay thế bật bật đi đâu rằng non rồi yes Yes, I, I simply wish to add that um, as soon as it becomes clear that this hearing can continue in public, that will occur, and secondly, that the public will be informed of what has transpired as soon as we have the information that should have been given to us in advance. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Judge Cartwright. The information about the information about the information about the information the information và thông chuẩn bị chuẩn đó phía kỳ phòng đại thà đại gia bảy nhà bảy trái kỳ tế được cho nên tầm đẹp tầm nông được viên ông nhầm ra cho môi nâng cồng này kháng bộ bài phía xa nâng đời nhìn đầu băng viên nông được cho nên cứ mình ai cho mưu khơi nhìn hơi nâng nghề thư luôn cả bộ bài phía xa bản tì được cho nên ông nhầm ra mình cả cài bài bản tích tạm nẹp bảy trái kỳ tế nâng kháng rõ đá bá cứ xa nà xong bà chấm ho vàng đầu lần mấy năm ấy bà còn là tập tiếp ở hàng nẹp bỏ bài phía xa anh mới khơi nơi cái chấm nà cà và phần tư này bắt tục sạm nà cà đi hay pì bì lia bàn tay chân đi ông chấm đây nâng bà còn ở ruộng vàng đầu lần vĩnh còi pì đây hàng sơn sọc bàn sơn lộc sơn vuông chơi như sa thiền đại chốn chạy trên pì bắt tục sa thiền nặng Mr. President, there seems to be one additional technical issue, and that is because the AV system is cut off. Also, there is no sound in the image going to the holding cell. So, there is no sound in the image going to the holding cell. So, there is no sound in the image going to the holding cell. So, there is no sound in the image going to the holding cell. So, there is no sound in the image going to the holding cell. So, there is no sound in the image going to the holding cell. So, there is no sound in the image going to the holding cell. So, there is no sound in the image going to the holding cell. So, there is no sound in the image going to the holding cell. So, there is no sound in the image going to the holding cell. So, there is no sound in the image going to the holding cell. ปัญหากระโหลกเยอะมากทุกวันนอกสายเฮ้ยมันคือยังกระไรประปอนแต่ตรงแต่ตัวสาธิตในชนดีทำไมไอปัญหาสมเลยในรูปเพียบชอบระ
Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the information we received yesterday was in the form of an email from Rob Lumpkin. Mr. Lemkin co-wrote a screenplay for enemies of the people in the related film One Day at Portray. This email was delivered to my colleague and he took this month to send it to the email at 1639 yesterday to our legal consultants and forwarded to me. Uh, the email was uh, unsolicited. Uh, we have just right now, a few minutes ago, forwarded the email to the chamber and all the parties. The full text of that uh, email reads as follows. Uh, email uh, email uh, email Victor, uh, Victor, uh, Victor, uh, Victor, that's me. Look, Victor, From reading the uh, prompt post account of the trial uh, proceedings uh, yesterday, it seems there may have been a misunderstanding about what Moon Chia said and Dee Dee. He did not emphasize not agree with the top lawnmower officers had been killed. What he said was that half a dozen cabinet and top officials had been put through a revolutionary process and condemned to death by a military tribunal. Which, from the way he knew and was not a part of. It should be added that Radio Pompen, the official state radio station, broadcast announcement of these executions at the time and gave the same rationale as Nguyen Chia does in our presentation. Nguyen Chia does not admit direct responsibility for executing the lone cabinet members. Rather, he asserts that the rationale is correct. Of course, that rationale is no different from U.S. killing Bin Laden, etc. I hope that the evidence to the court makes it clear that there really is a little prosecutorial value to what is reported. Now the important part, Mr. President, the approach. By the way, regarding portray, this was a massacre ordered by Rosnim, not central command. We have a mass, a wealth of evidence about the agenda, but have so been far. Unable to complete our second film due to it's not the US personal needs. Mr. President, your honors, this information is obviously extremely important. But let me explain exactly why and how it relates to Mr. Hedder's testimony. First, Mr. Lemkin may be in possession of information that is direct and exculpatory for Moon Chia as to the charges that are being tried. If indeed Mr. Lemkin possesses this information, and if it shows what he claims, that it vindicates exactly the position we have taken in front of us, including in our submissions just a few days ago. And it even involves Rosnim, whose responsibility for the offense at Dual Portray we have previously explored before the chamber. Second, the evidence Mr. Lemkin claims to have concerning Ross Nguyen directly cooperates with the positions we have taken countless times for years about the man's structures in democratic Cambodia and the role of his own leaders. Now that information, Mr. President, relates directly to Mr. Hedder, whose analysis has previously been central to our claims in that specific regard. And it appears that the list of Mr. Hedder's interviews provided by the prosecution yesterday 
ដោះមតទុកគំនៃរបស់ខ្ញុំតាក់ទងទៅនឹងតបការចោទៅកាន់ថាមានការកាប់សម្រាប់មន្ត្រីកពូលសហរដ្ឋអាមេរិកាជា
ហើយអាចខាងផ្នែកខាងសន្តិសុខអាចជាងជើញឲ្យសាធារណៈជនដែលចូលមកស្ដាប់នៅក្នុងបន្ទប់សាធារណៈការនៅក្នុងសាធារ
Dear Victor, Victor Chitty, uh, from reading the Phnom Penh Post account of the trial proceedings uh, yesterday, it seems there may have been a misunderstanding about what the Moon Chia said in our DVD. He did not emphasize enough. He did not agree that top Moon officers had been killed. What he said was that half a dozen well-known and top officials had been put through revolutionary due process and condemned to death by a military tribunal, which from memory of the was not part of. It should be added that Radio Phnom Penh, the official state radio station, broadcast announcements of these executions at the time and gave the same rationale as you and Chia does in our DVD. Moon Chia does not admit direct responsibility for executing the law no cabinet members. Rather, he asserts that the rationale was correct. Of course, that rationale is no different from U.S. from U.S. killing Bin Laden, etc. I hope that the evidence to the court makes it clear that there really is little prosecutorial value in what is reported to have been used of our film in this instance. Now, Mr. President, the important part of the email, and it says, I quote, by the way, Regarding portray, this was a massacre ordered by Rose Lynn, not Central Command. We have amassed a wealth of evidence about Min's agenda that have been so far unable to complete our second film due to the co-producer being in the U.S. for personal reasons. Yours sincerely, TCW382. Your Honor, this information, this new information which has come to light is obviously extremely important. But let me explain exactly why and how it relates to Mr. Head's testament. First, TCW382 may be in possession of information that is directly exculpatory for Nguyen Chia as to the charges at 2.4 trade. If indeed TCW 382 possesses this information and if it shows what it claims, it will vindicate exactly the position we have taken for months, including in our submissions just two days ago. And it even involves Rosalind, whose responsibility for the events at Tulpo-Tray we have previously explored before the change. Second, the evidence TCW382 claims to have concerning Rosalind directly corroborates the position we have have taken countless times for years about command structures in democratic Kampuchea and the role of those own leaders. That information relates directly to Mr. Heather, whose analysis has previously been central to our claims in that regard. It appears that the list of Mr. Heather's interviews provided by the prosecution yesterday include numerous interviews with cadres from the northwest zone. Mr. Heather is therefore likely to be in a position to give testimony concerning the exact same facts as TCW382. Third, Mr. President, TCW382 may be in possession of information that is directly exculpatory for our client in relation to the alleged execution of top law officials, which the prosecution says is within the scope of this trial. More to the point, TCW382 may be able to explain that the video that he himself produced and which the prosecution relies on for the culprit's purposes is in fact exculpatory. That testimony 
Of all this, of this uh, new information, no, Mr. President, uh, we have three related questions. First, uh, we ask the chamber to admit this email as evidence, as new evidence, pursuant to Rule 87, paragraph 4. The email was previously unavailable, uh, to us, and it's clearly very relevant. And it is also similar in, similar in form to Ted Sambat's book, which the prosecution has relied on extensively. Second, we request that the chamber summons TCW 382 to appear before the chamber and or undertake further investigation pursuant to Rule 93. And third, we seek an immediate adjournment of Mr. Heather's testimony pending the outcome of the investigation. An adjournment is necessary so that we have as full a record as possible prior to questioning Mr. Heather on this subject of central and crucial relevance to this trial. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. President and Your Honours. Mr. President, uh, I thought that the era of devices and stunts from the defence had come to an end with the previous defence team. The submission you have just heard shows that devices and stunts are still very high on the agenda of the new and cheered defence team. In my respectful submission, it is nothing short of scandalous to make an application to this court, and I deal with the third one, to adjourn the testimony of Mr. Heather. To seek to adjourn his testimony on the grounds that the defence have an email from somebody who was a producer of a film who was not present when Nguyen Chia was being spoken to. He was giving commentary about what Nguyen Chia said on the DVD. That's entirely not a matter for Mr. Lemkin. It's a matter for you. You have the DVD on the case file. You can see and hear what Nguyen Chia said. You do not need a scrap of assistance from Mr. Lemkin. Thank He may be in possession of information if he possesses the information. We don't know what the information is about Westin. If the defence are in possession of information, call it or make an application to call it. Don't come before the court asking to adjourn the testimony of a witness because we may have some information that may be relevant. It may be entirely irrelevant. He claims to have information that directly corroborates something. And then we have Mr. Hedder introduced the further problem for the defence. Talking about Mr. Heder's analysis. Mr. Heder is not here to provide you judges with analysis because analysis comes from experts. He is not an expert witness. He cannot give you an analysis because analysis is about interpretation of facts, not what the facts are and what evidence goes to support the facts. Thank you, Mr. President.
the producer talking about partial and selective information. This, in my respectful submission, is an attempt to try and package a routine Section 87.4 application and trying to make it stick to Mr. Header. That, in my respectful submission, is dishonest at worst and disingenuous at best. Can I deal with the three particular points? Do you admit that? Well, what if the prosecution said we've got an email? Who says we've got an email from somebody who says another film on the Sunday Times? 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 Who says he can't help you with what was said. It's shown on the DVD. So what evidence do you have? What relevance does this email have? And the answer is absolutely none. Because the email is not even a DVD. It's 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 not even a DVD. There's really little prosecutorial value. He's not here to comment on the prosecution. He's not a witness that can help this court. See through the charade for what it is. It's show voting. It's a device. It's a stunt. Another stunt from the same team. ยับเอาต่อกระทำเป็นเต้นมกปิกรมีตะวิกาเปียกระไดดอดได้ไม่ใช่ไหมแต่ในเรื่องของการตลาดการตลาดการตลาดการตลาดการตลาดการตลาด
would be inviting a witness into Alice in Wonderland. And then the most egregious part of this application, the third part, to seek to adjourn Mr. Hedder's testimony because he's taken perhaps some statements from North West soldiers who we might have some evidence about but we're not sure because we don't know what's being said about Rosnick. If the defence want to put questions to Mr. Hedder, not about his analysis of tool pool trade, because that's impermissible. If they want to put evidence about something he has written about tool pool trade, get on and do it. I stress what you have said in three emails to the parties. The purpose of Mr. Hedder's testimony is for him to give testimony on books and articles authored by him, interviews conducted by him, and matters of which he has a direct personal involvement. He is not here to give analysis about tool pool or opinion evidence I stress that I ask you to deal with this matter now, peremptorily, quickly, and consign all three of these applications to where they belong. Let's stop the devices and get on with the evidence. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour à vous, bonjour à Mesdames et Messieurs les juges, bonjour à tous. Je voudrais ajouter quelques mots à ce qui vient d'être dit par Monsieur le Procureur. Et je dirais en premier lieu que je partage totalement à la fois son avis et sa position sur les trois demandes qui ont été faites par la défense de Nunchia. Je dois dire que je suis assez abasourdi par cette demande ce matin, même si j'ai compris depuis hier que à ce stade du procès, tout allait devenir possible et tout allait être demandé, que cela soit fondé ou que cela ne soit pas fondé. Je suis abasourdi aussi par le moyen qui est utilisé, c'est-à-dire de nous prévenir au dernier moment, sans nous donner la moindre information sur la demande qui allait être faite. Je dois dire que, pour ma part, je suis, pour utiliser des mots pas trop forts, pour le moins méfiante à l'égard de ce mail qui arrive de nulle part au tout dernier moment de la part de quelqu'un qui est un producteur et qu'on nous annonce comme un co-auteur et qui soudainement viendrait donner son avis dans une procédure sérieuse judiciaire qui se déroule depuis 18 mois. Il y a un film dans ce dossier qui n'a pas été visionné pour la première fois il y a trois ou quatre jours, qui est visionné depuis le début, morceau par morceau, que tout le monde peut regarder, qui est essentiellement en clair, avec le visage de M. Nunchia et les paroles en clair de M. Nunchia. Et nous avons maintenant un producteur de ce film qui nous dirait ce que dit M. Nunchia quand vous le voyez, c'est faux. Je trouve ça assez extraordinaire. Je trouve ça totalement sombre. Et je m'étonne qu'on prétende de telles choses. Ce film est là et la chambre peut se faire en effet son idée sur les pièces qui lui ont été apportées sans avoir besoin des commentaires d'un homme qui n'a assisté à rien, qui n'est pas un juriste et qui ne participe pas à ce débat sérieux et judiciaire encore une fois. Les commentaires valent aussi pour une journée actuelle pour Cray, puisque nous avons vu, là encore, des gens s'exprimer en Khmer sans que, sauf erreur de ma part, à aucun moment, 
le nom de Rosny ne soit prononcé. Quoi qu'il en soit aujourd'hui, je pense que la moindre des choses, pour donner un semblant de caractère sérieux à la requête de mon confrère, c'était de faire une requête ซึ่งน่าจะเล่นในอาสาที่ยังตามไปเขียนไปสำหรับปีจะบุญนะไปเป็นจะมูลทานในสำนารบอกว่าไม่ใช่ไปในกอดเทรดเพื่อก็มัน
ពីកម្ពុជាគ្រាមទីបាល់ខាងរៃដើម្បីបង្ហាញអំពីសេចក្តីសម្រេចរបស់អង្គជំរះទៅលើសម្រាប់សុំរបស់វិទ្យាវិ
ឬគឺជាអង្គការត្រឹមត្រូវមានវិធីតិចក្នុងមានតិតិវិធីអ៊ីនឌីវីជ្វាល់អ៊ីនទែលលេសអ៊ីកុលបណ្ណាបណ្
That fluency is largely because I, actually I didn't study Khmer in class. I did it with a textbook on the very first day. So, uh, what, what that means is that in contrast to, for example, my Chinese, which is rather I don't know if 1973 I mean, I had a head start, which was before I studied Khmer, I had learned Thai, although those are different because of many years of interaction. There are a lot of similarities, particularly in terms of technical vocabulary. But even with that foundation, it was a year and a half uh, really hard work before I could have a reasonable conversation on most any topic and could read a text from any topic. Um, so by the time I left, or if you prefer, fled, Cambodia in April 1975. Uh, I was uh, pretty good, uh, but not, I would say, actually absolutely fluent. The fluency uh, is more a result of the time I spent on one or the other side of the Thai-Cambodian border. ពីស្ទុកគ្នាអីវីអារ៉ាកាមវិបកកអស់យើងនិយាយភាសាថៃភាសាថ្មីពីនៅក្នុងស្ទើទៅនឹងវិបកកម្ពុជាថ្មីប
level of um, proficiency in Thai, Vietnamese, Chinese in fairly short answers, if, if I can, please. One to four, Khmer, Thai, Chinese, Khmer, Vietnamese, Thai, and last but not Vietnam, least, French. Well, on, on Khmer, I'm a little bit more than some Sweng in a taxi, but you're plainly well advanced. Um, now, can I deal next, please, with... You've mentioned 1978. Now... Can I ask the question this way? I've obviously looked at an awful lot of interviews that you conducted, but can you help us when was the first time, and I'm, I'm using 1978 as a marker, when was the first time that you took a discussion, an interview, a statement that was pertaining to the period of democratic Cambodia. Was it during the period? The back end? Was it after? Can you help If I presume we're talking about that's the temporal jurisdiction. The first, I would say, were in the opening days of January I would guess maybe the third or the fourth of January 1979. Can you remember who you, where you were and who the people were that you were taking the interviews from? Um, I was in the part of Cambodia that is opposite Da Priya in Thailand. And I there were some interviews that were done on what was pretty clearly the Thai side of the border. border. And then some interviews that were done just inside the Cambodian side. And just sort of categories of people. Are we talking refugees? Are we talking um, um, members of the regime? Lower Can you just give us some idea? Yes. I mean, I suppose um, those that were interviewed on the Thai side, um, I think could be described as asylum seekers. Um, those who were interviewed on the Sector 5 side, um, were people who were, I, I, to my knowledge, were ordinary people, not Catholic, not armed forces, combatants, who were on the run from the cooperatives in that part of Sector 5 that began to disintegrate because of the uh, arrival, impending arrival, or feared arrival no, of the Vietnamese. I'd like to go back. I handed, or you were handed a document yesterday, which was an index of your work. Do you still have it, or can I provide you with a fresh one? Can you turn, please, to page four?
At the bottom, we have um, a heading number two, header interviews with accused refugees and others. Now, I'd like to just concentrate on the first two items under the heading interviews with Q Song Pong. Now, I can show you these if you, if you need to see them, but can I deal first of all with item number 70? And that's an interview on the 4th of August 1980. Did you speak with Q Song Pong? on that day, and is there a, a record? Uh, the answer is yes, but to my recollection, that's the correct day. Uh, I believe the encounter was over two days because I spent a night in this location. Um, and my recollection is that records or records records of the Encounter the statements. Some of it was taped, some of it was handwritten handwritten in a notebook. Steve Hedder's interpretation into the So some of it was taped. Not all of it was taped, if I recall correctly. But I made handwritten descriptions or at least notes. I just want to ask you and show you, please, a document with Mr. President's permission. This is about item 69 on the list. And uh, we've all got the document numbers, but I say them E3 slash um, 198. Um, can I ask you to have a look at this? It's, it's also IS 20.23. I'm just going to show you this record, please, Mr. Heather, with the President's permission, and just see if this does, once you've read it, recall any meeting with Q. Sampong on the 17th of August, can I say that council might be best looking at IS Um, this one was not done by me, but one of the other people with whom I was working. And if I recall correctly, I don't know whether this is a court translation or a translation that I did from the narratives that were taken by the time. It looks more to me like a court translation than a translation I would have done because it doesn't have the peculiarities that are characteristic of my translation style. Now, given that time in August 2005, you were in Cambodia, you've said already. Um, 
Do you remember seeing that document in its original form or some notes to do with this interview, or did you oversee these notes? Did you have any connection with this interview at the time, whether by looking at the notes, translating things? Does it, does it bring anything back seeing that document? Um, my recollection is that the notes were done originally in handwritten Khmer, and then that at a subsequent point, not too long after the interview occurred, I'm, I mean by that uh, weeks or a month, not days or a year, um, the Khmer was input into a computer file. And this may well be a translation that's done from the computer file version of the earlier, one could say, original handwritten notes. And in terms of the procedure for recording, you've described your procedures for recording. Um, was it for the others in the team, the same system of questions and answers being recorded down? Um, did they have prepared questions? Was it audio um, I, I, I'm pretty sure that the, the, the methodology, if you will, was the same as the one I described for myself. As you can see, these are not verbatim. They're not presented in a kind of verbatim format. Um, without knowing it, we were producing what I was later told are supposed to be called objective summaries. Yes. Um, can I ask for that document back, please? And can I move on using our index again to the next page on the index, which is page five? And this has an e a heading of interviews with Ying Sari. And we see um, an interview on the 4th of January 1999 and a previous interview on the 17th of December. 1996. Can I deal with the 1996 ones first? And you'll see an item 74, 75, and 76. Um, yes, I mean, again, I would clarify, I, I would describe uh, what happened at an encounter with um, and in the course of that encounter, there was a taped interview uh, um, taped with his agreement, uh, taped mostly in the presence of his then de facto aide-de-camp, um, uh, somebody by the name of E. Chien, uh, who accompanied him to the place where the interview happened, which was in the hotel room uh, in Jantaburi. Uh, in, in addition to the taped interview, uh, there were some other conversations, uh, including a conversation, the informal conversation that happened over a meal um, in the hotel. 
ហើយមិនចាំពីអាស្គីមូដីតែប៉ុន្តែគឺសំណួរសំណួរអាស្ត្រាលីហ្វូកេសឈឹងប៊ើពីសេសអាស់ហើយមិនថែមទៀតប
OCIJ. That's item on page 5, the bottom box is headed OCIJ Intimate. Uh, yes, those were done when I was employed by UNAKRT and assigned to the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges um, during the period of the judicial investigation. Thank you. Can I take you to page 6? And if you look at items 94, 95, 96, 97 and 99, you'll see in the title box that it's got the name of the person and then ECCC-OCP. So do you re recollect taking some statements? I think when Mr. Robert Petit was uh, the head of that department, uh, uh, yes, those are interviews done while I was, as it were, secluded from uh, the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges to the Office of the Co-Prosecutors and myself and a number of other people from the Office of the Co-Prosecutors on some instances, including Robert um, did these interviews at the times indicated. And then if we can go please to still on page 6, we have this heading of other interviews. And there's a couple here that I, I couldn't place in terms of fitting them in under other headings, frankly. Can I ask you to have a look at item 88? Item, well, let's deal with that perhaps item by item. 88 is a statement on the 7th of August 1990. And the document number for that one is E3-390 and the D number was D210-9. Mr. President, to assist on this point, can I hand this document to Mr. Heather? Mr. President, can this please be handed to uh, uh, Mr. Hedder? Uh, and Mr. Hedder, I don't want you to mention the name of this witness. I just want you to help us, please, about the circumstances. Mr. Hedder, I just want you to help us, please, about the circumstances. Um, yes, I, I did this interview at the time indicated uh, in Phnom Penh with the person named, and if the document that you handed me indicates uh, um, the interview was um, recorded, tape recorded, and this is a, not my translation, but a court translation uh, of, that, of a transcription of that taped interview. And just for purposes of further clarification, this was done when I was at the Department of History of the Australian National University. Mr. President, 
มันจะมาตลาดการรวมรวมก็ดอกอะไรสำหรับในประตูรวมจำหรือแม่สะใจดอกสะใจรูปนี้ในขนมลงไปช่วงสำหรับนั่งเอาจีนก็ตลอดมากันกันไรเราจะกิจกรรมในขนมประตูสะมาการนี้วิ่งในวิลเลียมอกดอกมุ้ยสำหรับจบสมจีนกราวเชอ